Enrolling learners into your Coding Rooms course is easy. First, the simplest way to do it is to just give learners the join link. With the join link, they can hit that URL, log into Coding Rooms, and be automatically joined to your course. Existing Coding Rooms users can also use the join code from their dashboard to enroll in your course in the same way. Both these options work just the same. The join link is usually just a faster process as learners just have to click a link and it will work. We do allow you to add learners in a couple other ways. Premium users are given the ability to send email invites where you can provide the learner's email and we'll send an invite for them to click a button in an email and simply join the course. Again, they'll need to go through the onboarding process and create a Coding Rooms account, but after that, they'll be automatically joined into your course. If you have a long list of these learners in their emails, it may be most useful to use our CSV or JSON upload. You can download our template to check out how we want you to structure the data and upload the file in order to send email invites to each of the learners that you include in the file you upload. These invites, when it comes to email and file upload, will show as pending invites until the learner accepts the invite. Once they accept the invite, they'll be shown as a learner in your course. Let's check out an example. I'm going to invite a learner to the course. When that invite is sent, you'll see them as a pen pending invitation. Once the learner accepts the invite, you'll see them join as a learner in your course. You can also invite admins and TAs to your course. You, or the person who originally creates the course, will be known as the course's owner. The course owner has full abilities to do anything in the course, and the things that the only the owner can do are archive and delete the course. If you want others to have full ability, you can send email invites to other admins who can edit course settings, duplicate pages, copy pages out of the course into other courses, modify the pages, assign work, they can do everything, just like the owner. Or you can invite someone as a moderator. Moderators can grade learner work, check learner work, visit all the pages in the course, see the content, but they cannot edit the content. This is usually preferred if you, in your classroom or your educational setting, you have teaching assistants, TAs. Usually that's a moderator role. If you have learning designers or others that just need to look at the content in some way, you may wanna use a designer role. Designers can create pages in the course, they can edit the pages in the course, but they can't see any of the learner data. They can't see who's enrolled, they can't see the grades, they can't review student work, they can't do any of those things. It's essentially the flip of the moderator role. Again, you can send these invites to admins, they'll be pending until they accept, and then owners and admins can also manage the role and access of each of these. Moderators can also have limited access, let's say to only a particular section of your course. Sections let you organize the different cohorts in your course. The groups of learners you may have that meet at different times, meet in different days, or however the different groupings, cohorts, sections of your course works. You can either create sections with our editor, or you can do a CSV or JSON file upload to start to create sections.
Once you have sections, you can add learners to each section, and this will allow you to see them in our different filters on our lightning grader, in the gradebook, and other elements of our UI that let you see just those groupings at a single time. And then lastly, but not least, is group sets. We call this feature group sets because it's a collection of groups. If it is most powerful when you want to do group assignments, ways for learners to collaborate on individual pages, let's say in a coding room's IDE, on multiple choice questions, and on short answer questions, they can collaborate on the entire page and see each other just like a Google Doc. So with this, you're creating the group set, the collection of groups. You can choose a section if you want to lock down a group set to only be for a section of your course, or you can have it for all the different learners in your course. Then you need to create the individual groups. Let's say group one, group two, and so on. It will create each of these groups. These are the individual members that are working together, and you can add learners to the groups as you see fit. You can also upload a file to manage these groupings if it's a little bit easier to maybe work in a spreadsheet application or something to create the groups. Sections and groups sets also have join codes. So you can send the join URL to your particular group members and have them automatically join those groups if you don't want to manually drag each learner into the identified group. Same thing for the sections. On the all learners and sections file upload too, you can send invites to learners for their first time joining your course in order to make them join in a section. So if you're really looking to manage learners in sections, that might be a great option for you. All of these features let you really organize the learners the best way possible to help you manage your Coding Rooms course. You'll see in other videos all the wonderful th things we can do with sections and group sets and all the wonderful things that the different roles and admins can do in your course.